Okay, let's talk about the NCDAP test. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take this test. And the NCDAP stands for the North Carolina Diagnostics and Placement Test. And what we're going to be doing in this video is talking about the math section that's going to be uh, on this test. And uh, before we get going, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm uh, a middle and high school math teacher, but I also uh, uh, have many, many online math uh, courses. And I actually offer a specific NCDAP math prep course, really powerful math course. I'll leave the link to that in the description uh, of this video, but more about that later. What I have here for you is a um, math prompt that you should be able to handle if you expect to do pretty well on the NCDAP. Okay, so again, you're taking this test, you know, it's a placement test into a North Carolina college, maybe it's a community college or a regular uh, state school, but you have to take this exam and it's really, really important that you do as well as you uh, possibly can on this test because if you have the math skills or, or other skills you're going to be tested upon, English skills, reading skills, whatever the case is, you always want to place as high as you possibly can because if you place at a lower level, you're going to be, you know, wasting time and money. You know, if you place at a lower math level than you really need to be, you're going to be spending a semester or possibly a year in a math class that you don't really need to be in. So <laughs> make sure that you study really hard. And just because you took a math class in high school, um, you're like, oh, I did really good. I'm ready for this thing. Well, just, be, you know, that's good that you did well in math if you did well. But don't don't assume that you're going to remember everything uh, that's going to be on this test. You're going to have to go back and relearn and study and work really hard. So what I have here, and by the way, the math that we're talking about is, of course, going to be high school level math. Okay, you're placing, uh, this is a placement test for college. So we're talking about a lot of algebra and geometry. And I have a um, problem here that I would classify as a very easy type of uh, problem and uh, let me go ahead and just obviously explain this to you. So we have some sort of geometric figure here. Okay, it's got some information, and I'd like you to find the value of z minus y. Okay, so here's the information. I want to pause the video and go ahead and give this a whirl. All right, of course I'm going to um, explain it and solve it here in a second. But before we do so, I want to give you a chance to solve it. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you um, try to figure this problem out. Even if you didn't know what to do, you should have at least paused and thought, well, okay, if I don't know what to do, what would I do if this was an actual test question, right? You should do something. You never want to leave anything blank. Okay, so what we have here is what? Well, what does this mean in geometry when you have these little arrows on these lines? Well, this indicates that this line here and this line here are parallel. Okay, so we have parallel lines. Now, just because they look parallel, right, and parallel means they're never going to cross, if I just in, draw two lines like this, and there's no indication that these lines are parallel, so if this is like line L and this is line M, I would have to indicate L is parallel to M. But there's another way in geometry we can indicate that two lines are parallel. I can have an arrow here and a little arrow here that indicates that these two lines are parallel. So we have to have validation that these two lines are parallel because if I just have two lines by themselves, then you cannot you cannot assume that these lines are parallel, okay? Anyways, so the, we're dealing with parallel lines and this line here is called what, okay? And geometry starts with a T, this line here. Um, and hopefully all of you are saying, oh, yeah, it's called the transversal, right? So we refer to this line as a transversal. It's just a line that crosses through two, uh, two or more other parallel lines. And when we have this kind of setup, all kinds of interesting angles are formed, angle relationships. And these are some things that you definitely learned back in uh, your years in ge or your year in geometry. Again, I'm assuming all of you took a year of high school level geometry. And what do we have here? Okay, well, this is a vertical angle. So 120 degrees, this angle here, all right, is equal to this expression right here. So whatever this angle is, is the same value as this um, angle. But this angle is expressed with this algebraic expression here, 3y plus 30. 
So what we can do is go ahead and form a basic equation. So 120, actually let's do it this way. 3y plus 30 is equal to 120 degrees. And you can kind of see here visually this is equal to this. But you need to understand that these are what we call vertical angles. Um, and hopefully this is all kind of come back to you. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, solve for um, uh, y. Okay. And I actually would like you to solve for y. Just a little other kind of pop quiz as we do this problem together. All right, so let's go ahead and subtract 30 from both sides of the equation. So I'm going to get 3y is equal to 90, of course, 90 degrees. And then lastly, I'm going to go and divide both sides of the equation by 3. Let me go ahead and scroll down here. So I get y is equal to 30. Okay, so y is equal to 30. But before I go any further, okay, I'm, I'm trying to find out what z minus y is equal to. So now I have the value for y. Okay, that's going to be 30, but I need to find out what z is equal to, right? So how do I know what z is equal to? Well, hopefully, now that you understand that this angle is the same as this angle, this angle right here is 120 degrees, okay? And this angle is the same as z, okay? So hopefully you remember this stuff from your geometry. So z, the value of z is also 120 degrees degrees. Okay, so uh, z is 120. Okay, we know what y is equal to now. It's 30, 30 degrees. So when I subtract uh, z or y from z, I'm going to get 90 degrees. Okay, so that is the expression of z minus y. Again, I would classify this as a pretty easy problem. Um, if you got that right, excellent. Uh, if you got it right, but you weren't quite sure why you got it right. <laughs> you were kind of guessing or you weren't as confident uh, in your answer. Uh, well, that's good. You still, still kind of reason through it. Um, but if you struggled with this, again, this is a real easy type of geometry problem. Just use it as feedback that, hey, you're going to have to go back and, and, and study up. Okay. And um, as I said before, you really want to study hard for this test because it's going to affect how much, you know, time, you know, you spend in math. Uh, in college. Now, you might be, um, you know, maybe you just have to take one or two semesters of math. It doesn't make a difference. You always want to uh, go or place into the highest level possible. It's always going to save you time and money. So uh, it's definitely worth your um, effort to study for this uh, test. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. So at the time of this video, I've been on YouTube for, oh boy, a good 12 years. And I literally have hundreds and hundreds of math videos on my channel. So um, many of this stuff can help you out for the NCDAP. Um, and I'm posting stuff all the time. So hopefully you consider subscribing. If you enjoyed uh, the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. What uh, college are you going into or applying for? Um, you know, what do you plan to study? You know, what was the highest level of math you took in high school? Um, any feedback is good feedback. I always got, like to read your comments. But... Um, Again, you know, as somebody who's been to college and gone a master's degree, you know, you're you're not going to escape these tests, right? You're gonna. This is one test in your career. You'll be taking several other tests, and you know, tests and exams are just going to be part of. You know, it's all part of uh, life in a lot of ways, especially in a professional setting. So, when you're faced with a test like this, take it serious and don't um, don't understudy don't underestimate it especially if you feel pretty confident about math i see this all the time students who've taken you know calculus in high school or pre-calculus did really really well they're like oh i'm good they get overconfident and they forget because they didn't study up and they didn't refresh those skills and there's a lot to ref uh to be up to speed on okay so i'm going to leave a link to the um to my math course, my NCDAP math prep course in the description of this video, super comprehensive. And you'll see what I'm talking about uh, in terms of the amount of math you want to be up to, uh, you know, um, ready, you know, up to speed on uh, so you can ensure that you do well in the NCDAP. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your college endeavors. Thank you for your time and have a great day.